Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sue Kornbluth. I am a nationally recognized expert in parental alienation and high conflict divorce. And I am here today to talk to you about breaking through your alienation barriers. I know how deeply this affects you on a daily basis, not being able to be near your children. It's devastating at times, and I have the utmost compassion for you. There are things that you can do, however, to help you ease the pain and try to break through the barriers to get closer to your alienated children. And it doesn't matter if you have an adult child that you're alienated from, a teenager, or a young child. Everything that we are going to go over today will help you in getting a little bit closer to reconnecting with your children, we hope. We've been doing this work for a very long time and we've been very successful at it. We have reunited children that have been separated from their parents for more than 13 years and they are having a connection today. Everybody's case is different. And I want you to remember that as we go through this. What works for one instance doesn't work for all. There are factors that need to be considered when using many of these techniques that we are going to talk about today. But overall, what I would like you to remember is that if you work on yourself and you reconnect with yourself and work through your own pain, you really are ahead of the curve in reconnecting with your children. Remember that conflict does not cure conflict. Compassion cures conflict. So I'm gonna go through this training with you right now, and I hope that you learn a lot from this today. I will also be answering some of the questions that you had sent in um, for me to answer as well. Let's begin by talking about what is an alienation barrier. There are many, many barriers that are in your way to reconnect with your children. We talk about this all the time. One of them that we talk about is the courts. The other is the alienator. The other could be a child, your child, or yourself. These are all kinds of different barriers that you're up against in order to reconnect with your children. Your attitude can also be a barrier in this. How many times are you so revved up from getting a text or an email or a call from, your, from the other parent who is alienating your child and you start going back and forth, um, creating more and more drama? That is not a way to get closer to your children. In fact, it's a way to distance yourself from them more. So a positive attitude and taking the high road, which we will talk about later on in this training, is extremely important when you are trying to reconnect with your children. You see, you will learn today, I hope, that you have much more power and control over things than you know that you do. When we allow our emotions to take over, that is what we are leading with, and that is when we exacerbate the conflict. It's not easy to decrease that. You're in fear and you're in panic, and I understand that. But the more that you are able to take that road, the quicker that you will have a chance to reconnect with your children. I want to reunite you as quickly as possible with your children. We all do that are in this field. But this is a process, and the, you can put up a barrier for yourself by thinking that this is an instant gratification process. It is not. It is a process that takes time and a lot of work to get through. And remember this, you did not get into this overnight, and it takes a lot of time and work to get out of it and move forward. So your focus right now today as we're going through this is really about on the problems at hand that you need to learn how to micromanage. It's really not 
focus so much on your feelings. That work, which is so critically important, and that's another training that we do on compassion all about your feelings, is really important to work on yourself to get to that place. But today, we are just going to talk about the barriers and how to work through them. So your thought process today, I would like you to really focus on is you cannot solve conflict with conflict. You know, years ago, and as we know as well, that the court system was set up to be a litigation court system. When we're in litigation, that word means to fight against each other. You're litigating. So that is a conflictual environment. When you're in a conflictual environment, all that does is raise the ante and raises your anxiety and your fear and your anger. And so it is not always the best road to take when you're trying to reconnect with your children. We cannot solve conflict with conflict. We can solve conflict with compassion and understanding, getting inside the other person's mind or your child's mind to really understand what it is that they need from you to build a bridge to healing. There is no room for participating in your alienator's drama. That is when you lose your strength to fight the fight, which is the relationship with your kids. I know, I know that the alienator can get under your skin on a daily basis. In fact, many of them are trying to do that with you. But your power is in not responding to that. Every single time that you respond to the nasty messages or what they're saying to you and play their game, they are the ones that are in control. So what you want to try to do is take back that control by only responding to them about appointments or things that are going on with your children. Um, and also taking the high road when you're communicating with them and not calling them names back if they're calling you names. That never works. A, a message back to them would be, thank you so much for responding to me on that issue. I'll get back to you with the time. Have a nice day. And if they begin to poke you, and if they begin to say, you're disgusting, you're this, you're that, that is not an opportunity for you to reply back and defend yourself. You know you don't need to defend yourself, so don't do it. They want that drama every single time they're in contact with you. That is what fuels them. So don't engage in that. You can accomplish reunification without lawyers through what you will learn today in most cases. I did not say all cases, and I want to be clear on that. There are different, I feel as though alienation is on a spectrum. There is also estrangement. So every case is different and every case is unique. But these are the techniques that we have shown and used to be effective in the cases that we have dealt with. And many of them are alienation cases. Okay. Let's talk about first your perspective of alienation. And I bet as we go down this list that you can um, connect with many of the things that I'm talking about. So your perspective of the alienator is that they're a narcissist that can't change or they have narcissistic tendencies. This is completely false and a waste of your time. The narcissist cannot change. They will not change. You will not get them to change. But what you can do is change how you react to the narcissist. And we will talk about that as we go through this, but don't ever forget, they will not change. Only you can change how you react to them, and that's what changes this dynamic overall. You may be asking yourself on a daily basis, how can they be doing this to me? I did nothing wrong. You may not have done anything wrong, or you may have done a few things wrong. Maybe you yelled at your child a couple of times. Maybe you didn't allow them 
to do certain things. But what begins to happen is in their mind, you did everything wrong. And so they're telling your child that you've done everything wrong too. And they are becoming enmeshed with your children. And they, the child and the alienator basically become one person. So you're wasting your breath and your time trying to argue with them that you did nothing wrong. It goes one ear and out the other. In fact, I don't even know if it goes in one ear. So that's a waste of your time. You have a perspective probably of black and white thinking. You are 100% right and they are 100% wrong. Well, nobody's 100% right and nobody's 100% wrong. You both were in the marriage and you both decided to get divorced. There were things probably that happened within the marriage that affected both of you and affected the way that you were raising your children. So it's not going to help you to have black and white thinking. It's going to help you to look at the big picture overall. Your perspective is that they hate you so much that they are trying to use the kids against me. That's true. Most times in these cases, the alienator hates you more than they love their own children. I'm sure you've heard this before and you will hear it again, but it is absolutely true. What begins to happen is they are so much more focused on getting revenge on you that they don't even recognize the damage that they are doing to their own children. So, also, you may be thinking, they will never change, so why should I try? Well, you're right. They're not going to change. But by you changing, you're going to have a much better chance at getting a relationship back with your children. So that's why it's important to understand that it's you that needs to make these changes. Unfortunately, in all of these situations, it's always the targeted parent that has to do more of the work to reconnect with their children. You see your truth as separate from your kid's truth. I completely understand that. The issue with that is that their, your kid's truth, I don't care what age they are, is their truth. And you are not going to fare well if you try to convince them over and over that your truth is the right thing truth and their truth is wrong. That is not going to move this forward in any way, shape, or form. You also probably believe that the alienator or your child only knows how to take from you or they don't play by the rules. You're right, they don't play by the rules because many times they're manipulative trying to get what they want and how they want it. They believe they are entitled to special uh, entitlement and treatment. That's who they are. That is not going to change. They believe they are superior. They're entitled. They're above the judges. They're above you. They're above everything in the world. But you cannot change how they think. You can change how you react. And I know I'm saying that over and over, but that is the key to the success here. You are the cause of everything wrong in my life, that, that you have this perspective that this other individual is the one that is causing all of this in your life to occur, and that you don't have any skills to deal with this. That's not true. You do have skills to deal with it, and hopefully you will learn a lot of them today so you can break through all these barriers that we've talked about, that you feel about the alienator. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the alienator's perspective of you, which is very different from the way you see them. They think that they are always right. You are always wrong. Does that sound familiar? I bet it does. You hurt me so much in this marriage. You, you are the one that left this marriage. You are the one that left this family. So I am going to hurt you back and I don't care what it takes. That's what they're thinking. I need you to apologize to me. 
for how you treat and mate. Even though their perspective is wrong, they believe that this is true. They live in this world, the alienators, thinking that they are right about every single thing that has happened, that you are the one that is causing their children, your children, the most pain. That is not going to change. You have to recognize that within yourself, even though that sounds ridiculous, but that is where they are coming from. They want instant gratification, the alienators. So that is why they keep sending you message upon message or file contempt upon contempt because they want the instant gratification. They want to do it in an adversarial way and they will keep coming at you over and over to get it. They also believe that you are controlling, that they only know that you only know how to take. They don't play by the rules. They believe that they are entitled to special entitlement and you are the cause of everything wrong in life. So as you can say, the way that you think about the alienator is exactly how they think of you. Hold that in mind. It's important for later on. They see you as you see them. Now, this presentation is on barriers. So one of the main barriers to breaking through and reconnecting with your child is your anger. Now, if you worked on your anger, that's wonderful. But most people that call our offices or most people that we work with tell us that they have resolved their anger towards their alienator child or adult child. But when we begin to talk with you, we see that that is not the case. And you know what? It's fine to have anger towards your child, actually, and towards your adult child, as well as the alienator. This is very difficult to move through and to process at an emotional level. So if you are feeling this anger, it's absolutely normal to do that. However, it can also stand in the way of you coming to a place where you actually can make a step towards reunification if you do not learn how to resolve this. I can't be any clearer on that. Carrying around anger only helps to perpetuate conflict. It doesn't help to decrease it. The first thing that can really help with taking down this barrier is identifying your personal anger towards the alienator and empowering yourself to move through the anger. Yeah, that's what I just said. I want you to identify your personal anger towards the alienator or your child. I want you to sit down. I want you to write it out. Everything that you're feeling, I want you to purge it out of your system because otherwise you are carrying it around with you and it is traumatic and you are living in trauma every single day of your life. And when we live in trauma every day of our life, we cannot make clear decisions about which way that we want to handle our situations. So that is why it is essential to let go of your anger. Now you're saying to yourself, Dr. Sue, that sounds crazy. These, this person has hurt me so much. I'm never saying that what they've done is right. It's not. But by working through your anger towards them and forgiving them for the way that they have treated you and not forgetting. Remember, I did not say forgetting. I said forgiving. It opens up a door for you to come and do this reconnection process in such a different way than you would do if you continue to carry this anger with you. Every single client that has broken through these barriers and reconnected with their children has done it because they have let go of the anger that they had towards the other person and they focus on just reconnecting with them. And this can be done. It absolutely can be done. Your anger towards your children or alienator is blocking you from seeing the bigger picture. The biggest picture here is not getting back at your ex. 
It's not proving to your children that they are right and you are wrong. The biggest picture here is trying to reconnect and have a better and healthier relationship with your children or your grandchildren if that is who you are alienated from. And I'm not saying that you should not be angry. You can be, but if you hold on to it, as I said again, it really prevents you from moving in a positive direction. And I know that every single person that is listening right now wants to move in a positive direction. But oftentimes you have to get out of your own way first before you can do that. You know, your healing process is very important to this uh, process of reconnecting. You're just as important. Your pain is just as important as anybody else that is going through this. And when we don't work on our own pain and we don't resolve our own trauma about all of this, we are not in the place to say the right things to our children, to write the things that they need to hear, to understand that they need to be validated and heard and accepted. So it all begins with you. If you are angry, you have to work through the anger first before you can put total focus on reconnecting with your children and or grandchildren. Again, I will say it again, again, again throughout this, working on yourself changes everything. So the biggest gift that you can give yourself, as I just talked about, to reconnect with your children is reconnecting with yourself. Let's talk about some techniques now to manage your anger. And by the way, anger is only one, one barrier to getting through um, this difficult time in your life. There are so many others. There are fear. There is um, panic. Uh, there is, um, you know, feeling like you can't go on, depression. There's so many. I have decided to focus on the one that I feel is the highest, and that is the anger, because that's what we see most of the time. So here are some things that you can do on your own to start this process. You can make a list of the things you're angry at your child, your children about on one side of a page. So what I want you to do is I want you to get out a piece of paper and on one side of the page, you talk about the things that you're angry about. You just list them. And on the other side of the page, I want you to make a list of the things that you can let go of and put a star next to those things that you can let go of. So this is also a great way to have a visual of what you are so angry at. And then on the other side, you can put what you can let go of. Meaning, I'm so angry at my child for calling me um, a horrible name or saying to me that they do not want to see me. On the other side of the page, you can say, I can let go of that because I recognize that they are in a lot of pain too and are being influenced by their alienator. Just writing that out can really help you release a lot of this anger that is in you. You can talk about anger all you want. You can talk about emotions as much as you want, but there's something that happens within our brains when we put pen to paper. It is a completely different kind of release and I encourage you to do that. Journaling is also another wonderful way of getting out these intense feelings that are inside of you. When we come from anger and we're writing an email or a uh, text to our children and we are full of rage, you can't possibly write something that is kind and compassionate to them at that point. It's, it's, you can't do it. I can't do it either. So you have to be in a really good place emotionally to put out positive stuff to your children to try to reconnect with them. Then I want you to make a list on some things that you can actually compromise on. This means that, well, maybe I can't 
let go of these things, but these particular instances I can compromise on. I can when the other parent maybe says to me, I want to have my kids on a special day because I have a special occasion, that you will allow yourself to give them that time, even though they're not giving that time to you. It is an overture of compromise. And that does work only if you can be consistent with it. And we'll talk about consistency later on. But make a smaller list of the things that you think you can compromise on. All of this, what I'm asking you to do, is helping you to shed the anger that you are under. When you let go of anger, as it says here, you are free to focus on what is most important. What is most important to you as you are sitting here right now, as you are listening to this, as you are taking notes? You are all here for one reason only, because you miss your children and you want to have a connection with them. So we need to free up that energy, that anger that takes, you know how much anger takes out of you on a daily basis? To be angry, it takes um, so much energy. It drains you on a daily basis. When we are able to release a lot of that energy, we feel peace within ourselves. When we feel peace within ourselves, we are able to take more positive steps to healing trauma. And guess what, everyone? Parental alienation is trauma. No doubt about it. It's not only trauma for you, it's trauma for your children as well. And trauma heals over time. It doesn't heal from instant gratification. When your child sees through your actions and words that you are letting go of anger towards him or her, or even the alienator, that frees them up to stop alienating themselves from you or from your grandchildren. You, the goal here is to show up differently for your children who you are alienated from. Let me explain that for a minute, because that's important. When I'm talking about showing up differently, I'm talking about this. Your children now that they have been separated from you for so long, and I don't care if it's six months or 16 years, they have, they probably lived with the alienator for a lot of that time. So their truth about what has happened over the years is now their truth. And that truth aligns with the alienator. And so therefore, they are looking for you to show up completely different. So let's say the alienator is saying that you are yelling at your child a lot. Or that when your child comes through the door, you take their cell phone away right away so they won't have contact with the other parent. You're actually giving them ammunition because when that child goes back to the parent, the parent, the alienator is saying, see, I told you, Jimmy, that your mother or your father doesn't want you having connection with me. And then the kids begin to believe that. And then when they go back and you take the phone away the next time, you become the target and the other parent becomes the hero. And these children are looking for that. So don't do that. They, the alienator is trying to trap you in all of this. So when the child comes back the next time, don't take the phone. Allow them to have contact with the parent while they are there. Of course, if it becomes excessive and they're not responding to you on a daily, on a, you know, and they're screaming and they're locking themselves in the room and whatever else is going on, there are times when you do have to go to the next step and contact your lawyer. But a lot of times these issues can be resolved with coaching or working with a therapist to learn how to manage these instances. It is important that you know what to do when these instances occur because the child is put in a place to be used as a weapon to catch you in these, in these instances to go back and report it to the other parent. Remember, 
the alienators see their child as extension of themselves, as I just talked about. So when you're angry at them, they interpret it as you are not only angry at the child, that you're not only angry at the alienator, you are also angry at the child as well. So they will begin to tell the child that mom or dad doesn't care about you anymore. They want to go live their own life. They don't want you, et cetera, et cetera. And they're enmeshed again. So the alienator sees your life just as the child will now see your life. They're one and the same. So we have to deal with both of these people. We have, meaning we have to deal with the alienator and we also have to approach your child in the same way. So let's review managing anger. One, I just taught you a coping skill for anger. Another thing that you could do with the anger, you have to really do a lot in spending time taking care of yourself and your own needs on a daily basis. No one no one can deal with the pain and agony of what goes on daily with not being around your child. It, it, you, just, you think about them all the time. But what I want you to think about more is not obsessing on trying to change your child or the alienator. Change yourself. And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you some more techniques on how you can change this dynamic to Get a door open to re-enter into your children's lives, whether they're adults, teenagers, or younger children. First of all, you need to define what you can change in yourself to change the alienation situation. For example, one thing that you can actually change that is really going to change this with you is do not participate in back and forth drama that goes on between you and your child or your alienator. Now, you may be saying, Dr. Sue, why are you putting my children in the same category as the alienator? Well, because as I just talked about before, it is extremely important to remember that the alienator and your children are enmeshed. And enmeshment looks like this. And it's when two people are codependent on each other to function in the same way to get what they want. And the alienator takes the child and um, really, you know, goes at them to become enmeshed with them. And so they are. So it is not going to be helpful for you to go back and forth in drama with the alienator or even with your child. For instance, if your child says to you, and I know this is painful, but they say it all the time, I hate you, don't ever come here again. The a, a res positive response to that is, I understand that you hate me. I am going to think about that. And I'm going to think about how I can, you know, make this better for you. Okay, that is an empathetic, compassionate response to the child. What is not an empathetic response to the child is, I told you that what your father or what your mother is doing is absolutely not true. And I want to talk to you. And I'm not going to talk to you ever again if you keep saying these things to me. That's not appropriate. And that what that's going to do is push your children further a further away and give the alienator more ammunition, if you will say, to tell your child that you're exactly what they believe you are. Nasty, you don't believe them, and therefore they're not going to want to communicate with you. All right. It is... It's not important who is right or wrong in these situations. What is important is recognizing what is important to your child, okay? We're not dealing with normal parenting um, issues here. So to break through these barriers, you can't use normal parenting techniques to do that. It's impossible. It won't work. 
if you have a child that is alienated from you, but you are seeing them occasionally, or when you do see them, um, you're disciplining them, that's not going to work either. Disciplining an alienated child will backfire all the time because they don't want to listen to you. The other parent's the fun parent, and you're the parent that's putting down all the laws. That may sound crazy to you, but it's not because that child will pull away from you. So it's not as important as disciplining your child during these very hectic times as much as it's important to rebond with them and see how and really understand how they are feeling. They are being used here. Let's have compassion for that. When you feel like you're being used, you don't feel very good about yourself, but they don't think they're being used. That's the whole thing about this. So they need you to be very warm to them, let go of a lot of the disciplinary things that you were doing with them before, and you will see a change over time. The other thing I'd like you to do when it comes to managing the anger is self-talk. One of the things that is extremely important in moving forward in these tumultuous situations is self-awareness. And self-awareness is important in every relationship that you have in your life, not just here. So when you are becoming anxious or angry, and it will happen, they're trying to push your buttons, that you have to step back for a minute. And you have to say to yourself, I am not going to engage in this negative behavior right now that the other party is trying to engage me in. It is not productive for this situation. So it is important that you step away. If you are reading an email or a text message and, you're met and your stomach is dropping, right? That happens all the time and you're becoming panicked. Step away from it for an hour or two hours, or even a day. A lot of times the messages that you are receiving from your alienator or your child does not need to be answered right away. It's better to step away, evaluate it, reevaluate where you are yourself and come back in a calmer tone and in a calmer way. Oh, I just got ahead of myself. I already just talked about upsetting emails from the alienator. Um, so, you know, this is our method, which we teach people because you can impulsive responses, right? Get you in trouble all the time because you're in the moment and your emotions are piling up inside of you and you want to get out whatever is inside of you. It is never a good idea to do that. That is when you also become nasty and you're lashing back out at the other person. And you know what, guys? A lot of time that is recorded either in these parenting apps like the wizard or in text messages. And then that is brought into court. And you don't look any better than the alienator because you're participating in that. So our method is what I described before is refrain, step back, regroup, collect your thoughts, and then respond. That is really the best way to decrease the anger that you have. Nothing good in life can come from an angry reaction. And you're feeding the prana. You are literally feeding them what they want. They want to provoke you. They want to get you upset. You have to pull back from that. Your children are doing it too, right? Because that's what they've learned from other people, from their alienator. So they're doing the same thing to you. Now, ex there's other things you could do for self-care. Self-care is so important as well. You have to exercise, you can meditate, um, whatever it is for you, you need downtime. You cannot be good to anybody else unless you're good to yourself first. So that's an important part of this as well. Every single time you feel that urge to lay it into your child or your alienator, think of it as another obstacle in reuniting with your child. Did you hear what I said? An obstacle. When you lay in 
and you start getting angry and you start participating back in this, you are setting yourself up to not reconnect with your children. And I know that's what you don't want to do. Look, as I said before, your pain is very important too. And you need to resolve that and talk to somebody about that. Hopefully you have a professional that you can because getting out those emotions is so critical to following and doing what I'm teaching you today. So don't think that I'm just going through this and saying that it's all on you to do this. Most of it is because as we learned, they are not going to change. It is you that has the power to change this. It is you that has the power to change this. That is why we are Dr. Sue and you. It's us and you working together to change this. Now, another aspect of this that is important and another barrier is how to micromanage your alienator. So probably as I'm talking now, you're saying to yourself, well, what do I do, Dr. Sue? How do I even respond to this person? How do I let this stuff go? Well, I'm going to talk to you about that. There were some questions that came in about that too and how to communicate with the alienator. So I'm going to go through this um, right now. Let's talk about a plan to manage your alienator. Okay, because we want to learn how to help you get what you desire. We want to identify what your child and alienator wants from you. And we, we want to know what to put in these letters, emails, and texts to your children and alienator. I know that you all want to know that. And that's why you probably came here today, because most of the questions here are about that. And I will go over a few of these questions as we go through uh, this section. Let me get through the section, and then I will answer the questions on this, because a lot of questions came to me on this topic. First, let me say to you, change is absolutely possible. You heard me. Change is absolutely possible. But to create this change, you must be consistent over and over on the ways that I am talking about to do this. Because consistency in your messages, consistency in your words, consistency in your language is the way that relationships change and develop. Because somebody that is angry at you, they don't want to hear stuff from you that is going to make them feel angrier or that they're going to be accused of things. That only intensifies the anger and intensifies your alienator. If you know anything about narcissism or people that have narcissistic tendencies, and I'm not on here to diagnose anybody, but there's lots of research that says many alienated parents have narcissistic or personality disorder tendencies. The one thing that we know about this is that in order to change the way that a alienator will react to you is by changing the way that you communicate with them. You see these people love empathy, but they certainly don't love to give it, right? But they do love it because as individuals growing up, they were never heard, they were never seen, their needs were not met in the right emotional way. So that's a big part of why this is happening as well. So I know it's so hard and you're saying to yourself, I can't do this. Why how can I swallow my pride and do this? I'm going to give you one good reason, your children, because they are the most important human beings in your life, aren't they? So that's why a lot of these techniques may seem exact out of the box, but really you need out of the box thinking when you're dealing with all of this. So most people don't believe it, but there are ways to change the dynamic between you and your child and your alienator. We'll go over them in a few minutes. If you're sitting here thinking this will never happen, then it won't. Our mindsets are so important to change. If we, like for instance, if, if you are looking for problems in life, and everywhere you go, you're making conflicts with people, I promise you that you will have more conflict in your life. 
because you're attracting that. But if you're walking around with a positive attitude and you're trying to attract good things into your life, you will attract better things into your life. That is how the world works. People get stuck in patterns. We all get stuck in patterns. We actually come from patterns which occurred within our childhood. A lot of this alienation is a generational pattern as well. And we want to help you to break this generational pattern. That's why we're here to help you. But people do get stuck in patterns. And when you're in a pattern and you're trying to get out of it, it's, it's difficult. It's like breaking a habit. But one pattern that doesn't work here is you convincing the alienator or your child to see your point. This is false thinking. It won't happen. It doesn't happen. It may happen many years from now or whenever you are reconnected with your child and you've built back um, some kind of a connection. Maybe then you can sit down and really talk about this and, and you know, they'll see your side of it. But when you're in it, no way. This is not going to work. And so stop putting your energy into this. What you need to put your energy into is learning how to communicate with them so they can hear you. Because isn't that what you want? You want to be heard. So let's teach you how to be heard. What I like to talk about is a compassionate plan to, man to manage, ooh, sorry, a compassionate plan to manage your alienator. Notice how I use the word compassionate. Don't be screaming at me or turning your head right now as you're listening to this. I really do mean it. A compassionate plan. As I said at the beginning, compassion cures conflict. Conflict does not cure conflict. Every single time, this works. If you can stay the course and if you can be compassionate in the way that you are communicating to your alienator, and to your child because your alienator is not going to be compassionate to you. Think about it. But they will soften if you are compassionate to them. So the key to making change here is reverse psychology or reverse thinking. Logically, we would think to ourselves, I'm going to argue this point with the alienator and everything is going to change. Nope. That is not how this works. Go ahead. I'm sure you've done this a million times. You've argued with the alienator. You've argued with your child, and all you get back is nothing. And uh, there's a question right here, actually. Let's go to that right now. I think this, this really relates to what we're talking about. This person asked, my divorce started in uh, February of 2019, and my boys, now 18 and 20, are alienated. They receive my texts and calls and never respond. I am looking for ideas on how to connect today or plant seeds for next week or next month. Fabulous question. I don't know who asked this, but it's right on target. Now, I don't know specifically what this person's situation is, but here's two things I can tell you right off the bat. If you are sending to your alienated child, and these are young adults, that I love you and I miss you in every text that you're sending, you're not helping yourself. Saying I love you and I miss you to your alienated child just pushes you away. In their minds, they know that you love them and that you miss them, but they also believe that you have hurt them, whether it is made up whether it's true or not, this is what they believe. So when you're saying to them, I love you and I miss you, they're saying, great, you love me and you miss me, but what about your actions? What about these things that I believe that you have done? And until you can address some of that with them, if it's true or false, it's their truth. And that is the truth that matters. So my advice to you, and probably while you're not getting back text messages or connecting with them, is because they don't feel heard by you. 
So some good feelers to put out when you're trying to get connected to your children, especially around the age of 18 and 20, is just to say something like this. And remember when I say this, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. One thing that you can say in the beginning is, I want to, I want to let you know that, you know, I'm sorry for the mistakes that I did made, that I made that hurt you. And I want to take responsibility for it. That is very different than saying, I love you and I miss you. In fact, when you're apologizing to anyone, I love you and I miss you is not an apology. An apology is taking responsibility for something. And that is what your children need to hear, whether you believe it or not. It will change the dynamic of this relationship because if you're sitting here Right. Get out a paper and pencil right now and write down every single complaint that they have ever had towards you. I know that they've told you they've had complaints. Make a list of that. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. You can resolve your own feelings about that in your own work with your coach or your therapist. Your child believes that you hurt them in some way. And that is the beginning of opening up the door acknowledging something that they have said and you don't have to admit to it in the biggest way possible you can just say i made mistakes and i want to and i want to make this better for you how can i go about doing that now you're not going to just send that one time one time's not going to convince them of that this has to be a consistent outreach of the same kind of tone and the same kind of validation to reach them. So I hope I hope that answered that. Dropping little bits too. You don't always want to contact them about these issues between you and them. You never want to badmouth the other parent because when you badmouth the other parent, they think you're just like the other parent. So these are the kind of things you don't want to do. But you do want to drop just little things. I'm thinking about you today or send a picture of you and them. But like I said, every situation is different and you really need to curtail a specific strategy and plan to uh, your specific case. But one thing I really encourage you to stop is saying I love you and I miss you. It does not work. In fact, it backfires. The other thing that is really important here is you have to think about taking the high road with your child and your alienator instead of ruining them. Lawyers will tell you the same thing all the time. It is important that you take the high road. If you are struggling with your emotions towards your ex, and that is for you to work out on your own, your child, believe me, whatever age it is, feels that disconnection between you and the other parent. All they want is for their parents to learn how to get along. And it could be just a very little civil connection. We teach alienated parents how to build that civil bridge with the other parent. And yes, it can be done. We'd be out of business if it couldn't. So it does work. But I'm not here to talk about that today. That's just another barrier that you have to break through. Taking the high road. You must see you must make them believe that you see things from their perspective, not just yours. When I say that, hear what I'm saying. I said, you, it's good for you to make them believe that you see things from their perspective. And that's the important part here because your job is to reconnect with your children. Okay. So, I'm just going to recap what we just talked about. Then we're going to go right into the, I think, the last part of all of this, which is your children getting inside of their minds, understanding what they need from you. And then I will answer a lot more of these questions because that is what the questions are really based on. And uh, for adult children and how to talk to your younger children as well. So we talked about this in the first half. I want you to get centered. And what I mean by that is working on yourself, 
learning how to do that, learning how to get stronger, learning how to manage your own emotions. I mean, in our, in our practice, what we do is we have something known as the Compassion Academy. And we've realized this over the years, that if we just work with parents and, and give you the language and write the emails and these text messages to help you get through this, that's not the only thing that helps here. Where we have seen success is when you work on yourself and you start giving yourself self-compassion and self-forgiveness and learn how to not become defensive first before you can begin this process of reaching out to your children, whatever age they are, or the alienator, if that has to be done. Um, people that have, do that and work on themselves first are much more successful in this. And that's something that we learned over the years. You, you want to self-evaluate. Really sit with yourself and really ask yourself, am I angry? Am I sad? What is it that is really blocking me here? And it's not just the alienator. There are things within yourself that are also blocking this barrier as well. One of them that I have focused on the most today is your own unresolved feelings and issues about what has happened. Uh, look at your role in all of this. You know, many times in different cases, you, you know, people say all the time, I didn't have any role in this. And I believe that in many, many cases, you didn't have a role. But in some of these cases, you may have had a role. So get honest with yourself. I get on calls with parents all the time that say, I wasn't perfect. And I say, what do you mean by that? And we go down a list and we analyze that. And then we see, yes, there were some issues that did influence why you're not connected with your children. But the great news about that is that we identified them. And now we can use those situations to get back into your children's lives and, and identify that to them. Your children want to be heard and they want to be validated. And I'm going into that in a minute. That's the most important part here. Prepare for a marathon. Reconnection is not a sprint, everybody. You know that as much as possible. And you know, we're really here to keep you out of court. I haven't talked a lot about court and I won't talk about court today because I believe that the barrier of getting, these are relation, what I wanna say is this is relationship barriers. And the court is a family legal system. I mean, yeah, the court's a family legal system. We are a family healing system. All therapists and coaches are. And that is what we are here to do. So many people have reached out to us to stay out of court and they have reunited with their children because court is conflictual. We want you to be a survivor. Yes, you are a victim. You are a victim of all these circumstances. But when we stay in victimhood, we do not move forward. That holds us back. We want you to become a survivor and a thriver in the end, in this situation. You do that by working on yourself and learning how to communicate with an alienated child. The alienation continues on, even when they're younger and then they get older and then they're even in college. It sticks with them. This is how their brain functions. It's like reprogrammed. So the leeway in there is to go in and make with a different approach, which I'm talking about today, to open up the door to this reconnection. You're, okay, now I need a drink of water. And now we're gonna talk about your children, okay? And let me say, not for one minute of any day, do I not think about how difficult it is for parents to be apart from their children? I think it is one of the most difficult, grueling losses that you have to deal with. And I give you the utmost respect, compassion. I think you're courageous to get up every day and keep fighting and keep finding ways to reconnect with them. 
And I want you to know that more than anything, that you are strong and you can move forward, but you must be equipped with the right kind of techniques to do it. And that's why I wanted to do this uh, webinar today for you all, because there are different methods out there that others are using, like myself, that are working. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about this in the beginning, but I want to go back to it because it is incredibly important to understand why your children are alienating you. Once again, this is from the kids and the alienators perspective, that it's not your perspective, it's theirs, okay? They are angry with you for reasons that you cannot see. You can't see it, and I know you can't see it, because these reasons that they are angry with you do not make sense to you. I completely understand that. They may not even be true, but these are their beliefs now. And you have a perspective, and they have a perspective, and the alienator has a perspective, and they're all just different perspectives. So to get back into your children's life, this is the golden rule, all right? You must meet them on their terms, not your terms. Let me say that again. You must meet your child on their terms, not your terms. And if that bothers you, I can understand that. But every single time I've had a client that has met their children on their terms, they have gotten a relationship back with their children. If the child is also willing to open up that door. Opening up that door takes a long time. It takes consistency. It takes the language that they keep hearing over and over where you're validating, accepting, and acknowledging them. It could take a year or two to even break through the mold to connect with them. I had a case recently. I've been working with this mother for over two and a half years. Not one response, and we must have sent maybe 20 to 30 emails and text messages and all, and, and following what I've been teaching you today, how to talk to them, what to say, nothing. Then, about two weeks ago, I was driving in my car, and it was five o'clock at night, and she sent him a message every Friday for um, almost two years, have a happy weekend, and I hope that you um, are doing well. Finally, two weeks ago, again, I'm sitting in the car. She texts me and she says, this is a miracle. He texted her back and said, Ma, I've missed you. And on this day, I want to wish you a happy weekend. Right? It's a miracle. It's not a miracle. The mir the, it's not a miracle. It's the work that was put in. It was the consistency of sending messages that spoke to him. It was her taking some responsibility for her role in this disconnection, which she did have some in it. And it was the repetitiveness of that that changed it. Now, every Friday since then, which has now been three weeks, they exchange a text on a Friday. Now, that might not be enough for you. But maybe for some of you, that's more than enough. Because the relationship that you are going to build with your alienated child after alienation has taken place is not going to look the same as it did before. But if you can embrace that you can have a different kind of relationship and you want your child in your life, then this process can work for many people that are going through this. When you lose touch with your child, for a long time, they change and they grow and they develop. And I know that sometimes you stay stuck in the pattern of who they were back then, but they are not those children anymore. And so in a way, you're meeting a new child. You're meeting a new person. They're still your child, but they've changed a lot. 
So you have to meet them where they are on their terms. It is the key factor in all of this. So once you understand all of this, then it is time for you to reach out and write a letter to your child or your alienator. And what they want to hear from you is what you feel that you did wrong in the situation. Remember what I said, whether it's true or not, this is what they want to hear. And I am sure that you have a list of things that they have accused you of. This will allow them to see somewhat that you see this from their perspective. And that is what the child wants more than anything. With the alienator, there was a question on here. What do I say to my alienator to help them communicate with me? So one of the things that is really helpful in the beginning is just to say, I've made mistakes here and you've also made mistakes. And I'm sorry that we didn't have great communication. That's true, right? You didn't have great communication or else you'd still be married. And I really would like us to find a way to work through this for the sake of our children. What do you suggest? When you put that, what do you suggest in there? That's like a little magic phrase. And it makes them feel as though you are interested in what they have to say. And that is what they are looking for. And then a lot of times the alienator will respond back. I've seen it all the time. And they will give you a long list of things that they feel is wrong. That is information for you to pursue, to guide you towards the issues that you need to uh, talk to your children about or say you made mistakes about. It's like a roadmap. So we have to understand how your children experience the separation, right? Okay, because that's going to help you in believing in what I have been saying about what we're talking about here. So they do not see it at all through your eyes. Your children will not see it through your eyes. Your children are children and they are not here to take care of your feelings. And that is one of the uh, issues that many alienated children that I have talked to in my time have said that I felt like I was here to take care of my parents' um, feelings. And that's something that really does bother them. Remember, they're kids, right? They were put in the middle of this divorce because you got a divorce. They didn't ask for this. So they don't see things through your eyes at all. They only see things through your eyes and possibly the alienator's eyes. Their interpretation of events that have happened are based on their truth or the person's truth who is brainwashing them. It is not based on your truth. And it won't be. We talked about that before. So the main reason your children do not want to have contact with you is because they are stuck in their ways of thinking. That's all I want you to think about here. There is no blame here for how you handled any of these situations, right? I'm not blaming you. There is no blame. You handled these situations the best way that you could at the time in the way that you knew how. But sometimes when you're in these high conflict situations, especially in the beginning of all of this and you don't know what to do, you are acting from fear and panic. And your children pick up on that. And they begin to see you in a different light. I remember once some, some alienated child said um, to, to me that my parent, before this all happened, was calm and loving and present and somebody that I valued. And then when the divorce happened, the parent became neurotic and anxious and um, angry and, and that is why the child didn't want to talk to them. Well, they're all normal reactions, right, guys, in terms of what happens when you go through something like this. But your child sees it differently. And they see it as you're not as stable as the parent who is with them, who is not experiencing all of those feelings. So just, just keep that in mind. There is no blame here. Blame doesn't help. 
what helps is looking at all the factors that contribute to this. So after time, your children start to believe that yet yeah, you're not the good enough parent and the other parent is. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but that is what is going through their mind. And that is why it is so important for you to learn to show up differently so they can see you in a different light. Breaking through alienation barriers really begins with you looking at your alienating child and your alienator. This is not a road you always want to travel, but it is one that must be taken to see reunification results. You must look at the dynamics here instead of just plunging into doing things that are not always helpful. Um, the alienator is always wanting to be the hero here, right? They do. They think they're the hero by giving and always giving and giving, giving and rescuing them from everything. But you also have a role in maybe working with the alienator to see that you can work with them and be the bigger person here to your child and show your child that you can take the higher road and work this through if the other person is able to do it. Many times the other person isn't able to do it. This isn't going to work in every situation. But in a lot of these situations, it does work if you reach out to the alienator in the kind of way that I taught you before and you ask them for their advice in this. They love to be asked for advice. You're, you seeing your child's truth as the truth that matters most. Now, let's talk about now learning to reconnect with your child, with your alienated child, as we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. And then I will go to the questions. I really wanted to get through all of this because all of this information does relate to the questions that many of you ask. But some of these questions are very general. And I cannot give you specific advice because I don't know your specific situation. So I will try to give you the best advice that I can without going, uh, without making it very personal. Learning to reconnect with your alienated child. It's not easy, but it's possible. Your job, unfortunately, is to repair the relationship with your child, not vice versa. Your child is not here to repair the relationship with you. You are here to repair it with them based on the truth that they know. And that's, that's a good thing, actually, because you can learn through this how to see the pain that they are in and help them to dissipate it. They need you to help them dissipate it. They need that from you. Validate the three things that I am really known for, okay, is helping everybody that is in this to learn how to valid validate, acknowledge, accept, and take some responsibility for the things that your children are saying about you. Your truth may be valid, but your child doesn't care about that, unfortunately. I care about it, but your child doesn't. And sometimes, too, as I mentioned, the alienator also needs to hear that you take some responsibility for what has happened. We want to open the communication with compassion. I reviewed this before, but I want to review it again. Conflict does not cure conflict. Please, if you learned anything today, stop communicating with the other party in a conflictual way it will burn every time. And you'll find yourself in more anxiety. You don't want that. Court is conflict, although if you have to be there, because in many circumstances you do, I still believe in court, it's best to take the high road because who wants to keep putting your children and yourself through that over and over? But if you are going to court, I do suggest that you work with somebody that understands alienation so they can put a plan together for you 
in terms of what to ask for, how to ask for it, and things like that. You want to have positive, non-confrontational communication, which solves conflict. Many people that are in these instances with their children who are alienated or with the alienator practice confrontational communication. That doesn't work. Really, when it comes down to it, then you talk to different um, experts, you will hear what is the main problem that leads to all of this chaos and high conflict, it's communication. If you can learn how to communicate in a completely different way with your alienator and with your child, things will change over time. And the three critical tools that open up this positive communication are what I mentioned before. One is validation of their feelings, okay? Validating that this is very difficult for them. Validating that you never meant to put them in this situation. Validating that they are hurting from all of this. And hopefully, eventually, you will be validated too one day. I've seen it. It does happen, but you have to get to that point first. Second, acknowledgement of their perspective and their pain. They're in pain. They're in pain at 10. They're in pain at 16. They're in pain at 21. They're in pain at 35. They're in pain for the rest of their life, just like you are. And as parents, we are there to help our children through this and be there for them in a compassionate way even at times when they are not being compassionate to us. And find an acceptance that building this latest connection takes time. It does. I wish I could say here that I am a miracle worker. People have called me that before, but I'm not. All right, what I am is somebody that helps people heal. And when you heal, and when you have some skills to do it and to reach out to other people that are hurting too, like your children, and your alienator is hurting too, because deep down inside, they have the self-esteem of a peanut or even smaller, that you have a more of an understanding that everybody is hurting here. And you are the one that is the clearest on all of it. And you are the one that can help heal this as well. So I teach you how to heal this in the most compassionate way because everybody wants compassion in this world. You want it, your children want it, even the person that has narcissistic tendencies want it. And that is the key to healing all of this. There are three things your child and alienator needs to hear from you. This is obviously a repeated, um, a repeated, uh, what am I saying? I don't know, a repeated slide here. Um, so, but I think it's just a reminder of what I just said. You need to take some responsibility for what happened. Now, writing emails or texts to your child or the alienator is really important in this. We help you do this along the way, but we work with you consistently on a one-on-one -on -one basis before we get to this part. But these are just some basic suggestions that I'm making to you tonight as we are talking about this and I want you I'm going to go through each one with you one the main question is to identify what does your child or alienator want from you and why are they punishing you so I want you to sit down I want you to get a piece of paper I want you to write down what is it that my alienator is um, punishing me for did I leave the marriage? Was I cheating? What was it? I was the one that left, so I broke up the marriage and they despised me for that. Just write it down because that is your clue to why they are treating you the way that you are. Then you can also identify what your children are punishing you for. That mostly anybody knows. Now, there are many severe cases that where you may not know. But in a lot of these cases, you do know because you've had back and forth exchanges with your child and they've told you over and over what it is. Probably you're selfish. You don't listen. You're controlling. You make everything worse for them. That's just a few things off the top of my head. 
And remember also, the alienator is not always the parent. It could be, um, it could be, a, it could be a stepmother, stepfather, it, uh, for, with o older adult children. It could be their spouses. It doesn't matter who it is. This stuff works for almost all kinds of alienators. Remember that you want to make a statement that you have been thinking about the situation with your child or alienator for a while and that you have realized that it's time to make um, peace here and that you are willing to do it and that you're open to listening to what they have to say. This is not a one-time email or text. It's, this happens over time and you have to be consistent in your messages. You want to validate, acknowledge, and accept their feelings. And you apologize for your role in what went wrong in the relationship. Sorry, but you have to swallow your pride a little bit. Remember, this isn't just about you. It's about your children. That's why I got into all this work. Because for me and the work that I do, it's really about your children healing, no matter what it takes. Because we know through research if they don't heal from this and they don't reconnect with their parents in some way, they have their own complications down the line, such as problems with intimacy, connection. Um, they have trouble managing conflict, um, depression, all these kinds of things that we know that occurs. So it's about putting your children first. So if you're writing a letter, emails, or texts, they want consistent messaging to them that communicates understanding of their concerns. What you do not want to do in any of these messages is talk about you and how you're feeling or come off as a victim to them. The minute that happens, they will, want, they will not want anything to do with you. It has to be about them and their pain. So here's an example right here. This is just a basic example of a email or a letter. Remember what I said at the beginning that every case is unique and each case needs its own um, attention because there are different scenarios that have happened, different experiences. Uh, so here's something that, that we have helped people to do. We have been telling you for a long time, or I, have been telling you for a long time that what you are doing to me is not okay. The truth is what I have been doing to you is not okay either. I realize that we need to go about doing things in a different way, not just our way or my way. We have not done things right all of the time. We would like an opportunity to show up differently from you. It's an olive branch, everyone here that is listening. It's an olive branch to be heard and it can't be done one time. And this is what I think frustrates people a lot. They send something like this, they get nothing back. You become completely frustrated and you throw your hands up and you're ready to give up. One time is not enough. To get back into anybody's life that feels you have hurt them, it takes time, consistency, and a lot of compassion. And there's no difference in this situation either. Now, when you're executing your plan, I want you to start putting the plan into effect. And that starts by going back to the beginning and working on your anger. Then you want to move into everything that we just learned today. You want to think about how to reach out. You don't want to say, I love you and I miss you all the time. You could say, love mom or love dad, but not every single time do you want to say, I love you and I miss you. If you are so bold, then you want to take a chance here. The first step is sending the first email to your child or your alienator and wait for a response to come back. Give it at least two weeks. If you don't hear anything and you don't get a response, you want to try to poke them is what I call. And that's where you will um, just reach out and say, I just wanted to see if you got what I sent and if you have any um, feelings or thoughts about it. Um, and then if that doesn't work, try again two more weeks. 
One thing I want you to know is that silence is not always a bad thing. People think that people use silence as a punishment. It's not always used as a punishment. Sometimes people don't know what they want to do and silence is communication and they need time. And your healing experience and wanting this better is not on the same plane as the other person who is healing. They may heal at a different rate. Don't be surprised if a negative response comes back when you send something like this. And don't be um, in a mindset that I'm never gonna try again. Negative information is also very good information. And it tells you a lot in terms of what you can use to move forward. Because a lot of times if a child sends back something, they'll reveal while they're angry at you. And that is your roadmap to following up with them and talking to them about it. So that concludes my presentation for today, but I do wanna go into some of these questions, which I will do now. And, and then I want you to remember something. Don't give up. Compassion does cure these conflicts. This is a journey and it's a journey that if you can sustain it, in most situations, you will get some kind of connection back. I don't know what it'll be, but I know for many parents that having a connection at all is better than having none. And that is what you really are striving for. But remember, you must work on yourself first. It is so important. I never reach out to anybody that I've had conflict with um, before I really have healed myself about it. But when it comes to your children, who are the most important people in your life, we can't always wait to be ready, but we can be prepared. And that is what is really, really important here. You really are the person that can help move this along. As long as you remember that the alienator is not going to change. You are the one that can change. And that changes everything. When you change the way you relate to others, it does change the whole dynamic of the relationship. All right, now I'm going to go into some of these questions before we wrap up. All right, here is one that someone said in. How do you respond and interact with a teen who is being taught to act entitled and steal from you? He uses your credit card without permission, takes valuables outside the house while accusing you that you are materialistic. The teen, of course, already has everything they need materially and more. Well, that's a loaded question there. And this is a specific question. Probably many um, parents have been dealing with some of this. First of all, let's remember that your children feel abandoned. That's the first thing to remember. And when children feel abandoned by one of the parents or both of the parents, they comfort themselves with materialistic objects. That feels good to them. So that is why they are probably acting as though they feel very entitled and are taking these things. You see, they feel that you owe them something because of what has gone on in this divorce or if you've had high conflict with the other parent. They literally feel that you owe them everything in the world for the pain that they have gone through. And that is why oftentimes when these relationships begin to uh, reconnect, the child oftentimes will reconnect by the other parent giving them money or gifts because that's the only way that child feels connected to you. And the hope is that within those circumstances, the giving of those gifts move into giving of emotions. And we've seen that a lot of times. So how I would respond to that and, and react to that is have compassion for your child and recognize that they are doing this because they don't feel safe, secure, and they're dealing with a lot of abandonment. And I wouldn't discipline them harshly over this because they are really struggling. 
And it's more important to find out why they're doing this behavior and what they're struggling for and having that compassion for them and saying to them, I really understand that you're going through a lot right now. And I'm here if you ever want to talk. The this, this stealing and things like that is a symptom of all of the underlying trauma that has gone on here. All right, here's another question. How do I rebond with a teenage son who is ordered to visit alienated parent in person, but lock in his room and refuse to talk or eat or have any interaction? Well, here's the response to that, because this happens a lot and I get a lot of questions about this. First of all, I do not believe in forcing children to have visits with their parents especially not if they feel they're being forced. It is never good to force your child into doing anything because they will respond to that in a, um, in a negative way, which is happening here with your teenage son. I do understand that you want to have visits with your son. I also wonder if you have been in um, uh, therapy or coaching or trying to reconnect with him. Um, so I don't know what is going in here, but he is refusing to eat and be together or interact because he feels forced to do that. So sometimes in these situations, you have to think about your child. Maybe you don't do the uh, visitations as they are stated in the court order. Maybe you start with just going out to dinner. Maybe you say to your son, I don't want to force this on you. I know you're not ready for it. How about we just go out to dinner once a week until you're more ready for this? The more you push and the more you force, the more that they're going to withdraw from you. So if you're in reunification therapy, that's a good thing to talk about in there but you never want to force a child to come for anything. It backfires. Um, this is an, another great one. My question now is that my uh, child is graduating from high school in a few months. What can I do to break through the wall of alienation that's been put up by his stepmother and dad and now himself? Um, that's a loaded question, okay? Um, if he's graduating from high school in a few months, it's going to take a lot longer than a few months to break through the wall of the alienation. But what you can do, which I suggest, is write him a letter before he goes off to uh, college, if he's going to college or a trade school or whatever he's doing, and really explain to him that you are here for him, that you understand what he has gone through, that you understand that this has been very difficult for him, that you are here um, with an open door, and that any time that he wants to talk, that you are here for him. Uh, that's how you break through these walls. There are layers and layers of trauma here. It's not just one thing, it's many things. And you have to peel away at each level to get there. But remember, as I said before, this has to be on their terms, not your terms. Let's see what else we have here. I do want to answer this, even though we did not talk a lot about grandparent alienation, and that is something that I do work in as well. Um, and it is important. And someone wrote in, as a grandmother, of a 14 year old girl, how do I mend the dynamics that the alienating parent caused against my relationship with my granddaughter? It's a great question and this happens all the time and the answer to this is, you have to mend your relationship with your adult daughter of your grandchild. It's not about amending the relationship with your granddaughter. Your daughter is the one that you must have the conflict with because she's the one that is holding back your granddaughter from you. So what are the reasons between you and your daughter that have led to this? And that's where I'm talking about sitting down and making a list of them. 
I have a client right now who is struggling with that that she's not seeing her granddaughter as much as she wants. And she wasn't seeing her at all for a while. But what we've been doing now is working and learning about her relationship with her daughter. And we are now starting to reach out to her daughter to see things from her daughter's side. And the daughter is coming around now. And actually two days ago, she had her grandchildren with her for a couple hours. So for you, it's really about working on that relationship with your daughter first, and then that could lead to an opening with your granddaughter. Although I would encourage you to, to um, send gifts to your granddaughter. She's in the middle of this. If you haven't been doing so already, you can send gifts and things like that. All right, let me see what we have here. Okay, great one. These are really good questions, everybody. Thank you. And if I don't get to all of your questions, um, you can always feel free to email me. I'm going to give you my email and the way to contact me at the end. I'm going to do two more questions. My kids are severely alienated teens. Five years now. No legal action by choice. They don't answer calls, but my ex makes them answer the door when I stop by. How often should I stop by so it's not seen as harassment? And what should I be saying to them or asking them? Well, first of all, it's very nice that your um, ex allows you to come <laughs> and stop by, even though the children um, are not are not speaking to you. But again, I'm not sure what those circumstances are where you're just showing up. Um, so I don't know about that, but this is what I would suggest. I wouldn't stop by every day. I wouldn't stop by every other day. I would stop by once a week or once every other week if you're not having contact with them. When you go up to the door and they say to you they don't want to talk to you or they don't want to see you, you can say, I understand that you're in a lot of pain and you are struggling but I still want you in my life and I'm still here and I'm willing to listen to anything that you have to say. That's what you can do. When you go and you're consistent in that way over and over, the hope is that they will continue to hear that. Also, you could write a letter and hand it to them. I don't know if you've done that yet, but you would need help probably in terms of how to write that letter. Um, Again, these are general questions, but what you never want to do when you do see them is you want to instigate conflict with them. Never. Uh, what else do we have here? What do you recommend to talk with the alienated kids that they must live, visit both parents? Police, civil service, priest, or? I'm not sure what that means. What do you recommend to talk with the alienated kids that they must live out. Oh. oh, how do I recommend talking to your kids about that? Um, well, first of all, I'm never for calling police uh, because that scares your children more than anything. Although I understand there are times when that does happen. So what I would do is sit down with your children and, and, and talk to them openly. You know, kids are really smart. They're already picking up on what is going on in the conflict between all of you. So I would explain to them in a very kind way that you do not, you know, you do not condone what is going on here. You wish that things could be differently. You're trying to do things differently. And it must be scary to them that all these other people are involved in this and that they don't have control over it. And that you're going to try to do everything possible to try to build a civil connection here with the other parent and, and not feed into all of this. Because all this is scary for the children. And they need to know that they're safe with you and that you are going to keep them safe. So they already know they're in the middle of this. It's not the actual divorce that causes the problems for the children. It's everything that happens after it. 
All right, the last question I'm going to do is this one. If a 33-year-old adult child is alienated since so being used against me in court by the other parent to sign an untrue affidavit saying he wasn't trying to come home, which had put me under duress to previously give up my spousal support, is there any way I can say in a text to help him to reunite with me? And for him to understand, I was asking for university money reimbursement from his father and it had nothing to do with him. This is something that I've had a lot of uh, experience in with the tuitions and the kids knowing about all the money and all of this exchange. Here's the thing, guys, you know, when the kids have found out about what has gone on in the courts and what the money exchanges are between the two parents from one parent that is sharing all of the court documents and all of the adult issues with them, it's very difficult. But what I can tell you not to do is to not accuse the other parent um, and saying that parent is wrong, that parent um, doesn't know what they're talking about and all the and all that that goes with goes with that. Um, I'm sorry that you are under duress. I do believe that. Um, but in terms of saying something in the text, all you can say really is, you know, whatever happened in terms of what happened with your circumstances in that time period, um, were you were you and the father negotiating a payment? What was going on during that time? I don't know if your adult child is accusing you of stealing. I don't know enough to understand that. But what you can say is, I understand that you're very upset about what has happened here. I am willing to talk with you openly about this if you are willing to listen. That's all you can do with this at this time. I don't know enough of information. If I knew more, I could give you a better answer to that. Money and tuition and child support are always issues that can come up. There are times when these kids are told you're not paying child support at all when you actually are paying child support. And, um, you know, those are adult issues. They're not child issues. But if it's still lingering, lingering into the age that they are 33 years old, then it is something that it really has uh, bothered them and it needs to be worked on and learning ways to reach out to them to resolve it. All right, that concludes my presentation for today on breaking through the barriers of parental alienation. There is other things that you can do to break through, but I wanted to hit the highlights here with you tonight. Um, I know that you're all struggling and I am really uh, feel for you on a, on a daily basis. I mean, this is all that we do in terms of work all over the country. Don't give up. That's why I can tell you. There will be days when you'll feel like you can't go on anymore, but then it's that one day when you get that text message that you've wanted for so long like my client got, and that's when the miracle comes. Remember, you can become the solution to any conflict within your life, but it starts with you. You need your children and they need you. But remember, it must be on their terms and it must be said to them in a way with compassion. If you would like to reach out to me, you can um, at Dr. Sue Kornbluth at www.drsuenu.com. My associate is Ashley Gamey. And our number is there as well, 267-261-8462. My website has on there everything that we do to help parents um, like yourself and grandparents as well. And we are happy to discuss any of this or all of this with you at a later time. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being here with you tonight. I hope that you got a lot of good information out of this. You can change this situation. It takes time, work, but most of all, belief and never giving up hope. And thank you to um, Elaine Cobb from Family Access for having me do this tonight for all of you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.